Hello. What we're going to do is find the expected value for the negative binomial distribution. Recall the probability mass function for the negative binomial distribution is the probability of observing the random variable x, which is the total number of trials necessary to see r successes. Capital X equals the value x given r, the number of successes we'd like to see, comma p, the probability of a single success. So again, we can kind of think through the rationale of this. We know that there are a total of R successes. So that means we have to have R factors of P. The remaining factors of the X would be X minus R. Those are each essentially failures to observe the desired result. And the number of, well, since one of these P's has to happen last, that means we have P to the R minus one times one minus P to the X minus R, that all the possible ways that can be rearranged would be X minus one choose R minus one. And of course the support for this random variable X is the values R, R plus one, R plus two, all the way up to infinity. As it turns out, this may not be the best way to calculate the expected value. My life would be a little easier if I can actually start counting from zero instead of one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna define a slightly different random variable. My random variable will be y, which is simply x minus r, or said another way, here x, the random variable, was the total number of trials necessary to see r successes. Here I'm defining y as the number of failures that have to be observed before we observe r successes. So there are a couple of reasons why this, this notation works a little better for us. So here, the probability of y equals y is given by, well, the total number of trials is simply r plus y. So we have r plus y less one over r minus one. We still have p to the r because that's the number of desired successes. And now the number of failures is y. And the reason why I actually wanna use this notation is this notation allows me to do a, an immediate transformation because we know using the symmetry of the binomial coefficient that if this is r minus one plus y, choose r minus one, that that's the same thing as r plus y minus one, choose y. Now, one of the features that we definitely wanna take advantage of is we know that if we write it either in this notation with f of x or this notation with g of y, we know that this indeed is a PMF which means if I sum over all of the values in the sample space, in this case, the support for y is zero, one, two, et cetera. If I sum over all of the possible values, then all of these g of y's actually add up to one in the same way that all of these f of x's would actually add up to one if I were adding the infinite series. So just to reiterate that, we know that the sum of the g of y where y starts at zero and goes to infinity, that actually equals one. And in this case, again, y is the, y is, capital Y is the number of failures observed before the rth success. So we have the parameter r, which is the number of successes, and p, which is the probability of a success. And just to reiterate that, that means that the sum of y equals zero to infinity of r plus y minus one choose y times p to the r times one minus p to the y equals one. That's a fact that we actually will take advantage of. So again, what we wanna calculate is the expected value of y. The expected value of y is given as the sum over all the y values that are possible. So y equals zero to infinity times y, and I'm simply gonna multiply out the, I'll put, plug in each of the g of y values that we have here. So for each of my g of y's, this is r plus y minus one, choose y, times the probability of p to the r, times one minus p to the y. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna notice that if y equals zero, then this entire term is zero. So this is exactly the same thing as if I had started my index at y equals one of infinity. 
Again, y, if y is zero, zero times anything is zero. That just goes away. Now, let's also, while we're doing this, let's write out this expression. So this is r plus y minus one factorial all over y factorial times r minus one factorial times p to the r times y minus p raised to the y. Now, the next step that we're going to do with this expression is I essentially want to factor out a, I'd like to pull out the expression r 1 minus p and p in the denominator. So I can easily take advantage of this if I simply multiply by the inverse of those values. So if I multiply this expression here by this, which is just one, then I can do actually a little bit of rearranging. And that's what I'm going to do next. I will scoot this up a little bit to keep it that part on my screen while I continue my calculation here. So continue with this expression. This is the sum of y equals one to infinity. And the first thing that I'm going to take advantage of is if I factor out an r, I can in turn put an r here with the r minus one factorial. In the same way when I factor out, so if I have y factorial, this is really y times y minus one factorial, those y's will cancel. My one minus p, if I have a one minus p here, I have to take a one minus p from my expression over here. And if I divide by p, that means I'm gonna have an extra p, so there'll be another p showing up here. So this is times r plus y minus one factorial, all over, again, the y and the y factorial, there's a factor of y that cancels, leaving me with y minus one factorial. I now have my r times r minus one factorial, which when I return this, that's simply r factorial. I have p to the r times a factor of p, so this is now p to the r plus one, and where I had one minus p to the y, I've now divided out another factor of one minus p, so this will be one minus p raised to the y minus one. So cleaning up and rearranging my terms a little bit here, this simply becomes, I'll factor out that expression that I have here, r times y minus p all over p. So that can come out because there's no relationship to y. This is the sum from y equal one to infinity. Again, the sum here, r plus y plus r plus y minus one factorial. This is all divided by y minus one factorial. And again, this is now r factorial. This is p to the r plus one. And then this is one minus p to the y minus one. At this stage, I'm gonna do a change of variables. That will make it easier to figure out actually what's going on here. If I let, if I let y minus one equal the value z, then that essentially implies that y equals z plus one. But it also means if y equals one, then that means z equals zero. Now again, so if y is z plus one, everywhere where I see a, a y, I can replace it with a z plus one. Everywhere I see a y minus one, I'll replace it with a z. So continue to sort of rewrite this a bit. This is, I'll still leave the factor that I have, r times one minus p all over p. I'm now not summing from y equals one to infinity, but I'm summing from z equals zero to infinity. So the factor uh, y here is really, this factor is really the same thing as z plus one. And if I plug that in, I'll get r plus one plus z minus one factorial 
all over. This is z factorial because y minus 1. This then is r factorial. r plus 1 remains, and y minus 1 is actually z. Now, again, we notice here that the 1 and the minus 1, they essentially cancel, so this is just r plus z. So rewriting this, this is r plus z, which is really r plus 1 plus z minus 1. Choose z times p to the r plus 1 times 1 minus p to the z. Now, at first glance, it might be unclear what we've gained by rewriting it this way. But what I'm going to draw your attention to is that this, what I'm going to draw your attention to is that this expression here, this expression here now is the PMF for a negative binomial distribution where we have the probability of success being p and the required number of successes before we stop the trial to be r plus 1, and z is the number of failures observed. So I know that this sum actually adds to 1. Again, to clarify, this is the negative binomial for probability of success p trials r plus 1. Since it's a PMF, that's 1, and that means that our expected value of y, our expected value of y, is r times 1 minus p, all divided by p. Recall the expected value of x. x was simply y plus r. So this is the expected value of y plus the expected value of r, which is a constant. So that's just r. So this becomes r times 1 minus p over p plus r, which, of course, we can write as p over p r times p divided by p. And with a little bit of rearranging, we actually see that this reduces to r over p. So the expected value for y, the number of failures until we observe r successes with the probability of success being p, is r times 1 minus p over p, whereas the expected value of the total number of trials to observe r successes is r divided by p. And that does indeed give us the proof for the mean for the negative binomial distribution. While I'm not going to go through the proof here, the proof for the variance is similar. I'm not going to actually walk through the, the proof for the variance. But to get to the variance, we would need to use the following formula. The variance of y is the expected value of y times y minus 1 plus the expected value of y minus the expected value of y squared. It's in the calculation of this term when we multiply by the expected value of y times y minus 1. That would be the sum from y equals 0 to infinity of y times y minus 1 times the PMF for y. It's in this term that if we rearrange this, we can actually get our index starting at 2, and we can rewrite the resulting terms there as a series with the PMF for a different negative binomial distribution, which we know sums to 1, and then this term then can be reduced, and that in turn will actually give us the values that are necessary to calculate the variance for y. Thank you for listening.